five. She lost the heartbreaker in the opener, but came back and had two good wins after that. Well, I thought our guys really bounced back well. Uh, like I said earlier in the year, I thought we have, you know, good resilience. You know, we've been in a lot of good games, and our guys have mostly found ways to win, and so that's exciting to see. You know, at the Charleston game, you said you wanted your guys to see the tape. You wanted to show them the tape of that game. What did you want them to see and what you stressed them during the season? Well, I thought it was one of our best defensive efforts this year. Uh, I thought we really were locked in on the defensive end. That led to some good offensive things for us. So really wanted to kind of emphasize our execution offensively was good, but our defensive execution was terrific. What have you kind of learned about this team through the early stretch? Obviously, new players, new rotations. You're trying to find what works. What are some of the biggest you know, takeaways you've had? Uh, well, I think we I think we play well together. I think our chemistry is starting to come. I've, I've really you know enjoyed watching our guys start to get to know one another on the floor, and uh, and it's, I think it's evident by by assists. You know, we have this is probably one of the highest assist teams that we've had. Guys are really sharing the basketball well, and like I said, they're learning the defensive things that we want to have our concepts. So, but that's what I'm excited about. I'm excited about I think our chemistry and our continuity coming together. The, the spurts, the good spurts, the bad spurts, are you seeing those mold together? Are you seeing those time periods reduce as, as we go along? Well, I, I'd like to see us play a great 40 minutes. I don't think we've done that yet, but I do think our guys are working hard. And I, I think we're going to have, you know, basketball is a game of a momentum, a game of runs. So you're going to have some ups and downs. But by and large, our guys have been pretty steady with what we want to do, especially uh, defensively. And is familiarity, chemistry, building, is that part of that? It is, you know, and, and that comes with time. I mean, I don't think you can fast forward that. It's something that just happens as guys start to play with each other more, get to get comfortable with each other, know each other's tendencies. And that's, so that's part of the process that, that we're going through. And have you seen guys read each other more where one guy's shot might be off early, so another guy says, I'll pick it up here, and then that guy rebounds later, you know? No, definitely. You know, where guys have really stepped up, and, uh, and, and that's the good thing about our team is that, that guys have picked each other up all season long. Uh, whether it's our big guys with foul trouble, guys have come in and, and given us a lift, whether it's our perimeter guys or the shooters, guys have come in, and whether it's our guard play, the guys who's handled the ball mostly for us, guys have all come in and gave good contributions. And focusing this week with finals and stuff, and then you know the light at the end of the tunnel, I guess, is playing on Saturday, so how do you... Definitely. You know, we're excited to be playing. Uh, we hadn't played a game in almost a week, so we're looking forward to getting back out there. Uh, it is final, so our guys are a little bit you know, concentrating you know, with regards to the academics as well. So we're trying to make sure we not only do well on the court, but we want to make sure we do well in the classroom. So guys are really putting in a, a lot of effort this week in studying and preparation and, and uh, for their finals as well. I know rebounding comes down to effort a lot, but what has enabled you guys to you know, I, I think it's our activity. Uh, it's something that we emphasized this summer that we thought we could be a very good offensive rebounding team. And then guys are making a concerted effort to go. I mean, that's, there's no shortcut to that. You have to just have, make the effort, and, and guys are really doing that. What have you seen from the contributions, I guess, of the two freshmen, the retro freshman Dre Fuller and, and true freshman Jared Green, and what they've been able to, how they've been able to help, to help you guys this year? Uh, uh, they've been very good for us. Uh, they, they've come in, and, and both of them have shown some maturity. Uh, you know, Dre being a red shirt freshman, of course, has been with us. But then Darren just coming as a true freshman, showing a, a certain maturity about him, uh, the way he goes about this game. He takes a real professional approach, and uh, and that's been for young guys. That's that's you very rarely see that. But uh, but I'm excited for both of those kids. They both have an opportunity to be terrific players in our program. I know you ought to lock with the mid-year transfers. Do you know when what game he would be eligible to play? Is that one of these games coming up? Or? Uh, no, he he. I don't think he would be eligible to play until after the semester actually ends and grades are posted. That's okay. when he'll be eligible. So I would still think, you know, it, it still has some time to go for him. Probably, probably after the 15th or so, 15th, 16th. But I'm not sure the exact date because everything has to be posted. Okay. With Dre specifically, he wasn't playing a whole lot early on, but starting with that first Charleston game, he threw in. Where have you seen him change the last week or so? Well, I think he's, I think the game started slowing down for him. I mean, he was excited to get started this year. He sat out a year, and then, you know, he had a few injuries he battled through. And so I think he was just, just anxious to get going. And But he, I think he's settled in now. He, he, he realized the pace of the game. He's getting he's getting his rhythm. And I think that's really helped him to be uh, more consistent. Days on, last four games, I believe his turnover, or his assist turnover ratio is 20 to 1. Uh, just talk about what he's done recently at the point. Uh, you know what, well, he's been terrific. You know, he's come in, he, he's, he's led, he's, uh, he's handled the ball really well for us. And, uh, and that's what we anticipated him being able to do. I didn't know he'd be 20 to 1 during any stretch, but, but he does do a very good job of taking care of the basketball. He very rarely turns it over, and he does a good job of leading his team. The, the final
final month before conference play starts, are there certain things that you'll be trying or, or trying to accomplish uh, during this span? Oh, we just want to keep getting better. You know, we tell our players we want to get better every time we step out on the floor, every time we step on the practice court. And that's all we're trying to do. And that's, that's the best preparation for a conference play is to keep improving before you arrive. NJIT has back to the five foot nine dynamo who just fills it up. How do you go about stopping him defending him? Well, whenever you're playing a guy of his caliber, he averages 23 and a half points a game. Uh, you just hope to contain him. I mean, you're not going to stop a young man who's, who's that proficient at scoring the basketball. You just want to try to contain him, and you want to make sure you're aware of where he is at all times because he's, he's a threat, whether it's, he, whether it's behind the arc, whether it's in the mid-range, whether it's at the basket. He's a three-level scorer. So uh, you want to make sure everybody just has an idea of where he is and, and, and put their, forth their best effort. Good. Uh, thanks. Appreciate it. Cool. Thank you.